Hiya, welcome to Worship Wednesdays. Um, if we know each other and you don't have a Bible in front of you, why don't you go and grab one? I'm just going to do a really quick welcome. Um, if you have one on your phone, it's totally fine. Um, and if you don't have one at all, don't worry, I've, I've got one. I'm going to read from mine. Um, but hi, if we haven't met before, I'm Hannah. Um, I'm part of the worship team here at Lagan Valley Vineyard. And I am also part of WTC which is basically a university that happens in our kids' rooms, um, which is really cool. But, um, so yeah, welcome to Worship Wednesdays. Um, we're going to worship in about 10 minutes. Um, but I just wanted to share with you a text that I've just kind of been particularly drawn to today. Um, I'm really hoping that my face is in focus because um, I'm having loads of technical difficulties with these cameras. So hopefully, if not, I'm so sorry. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to be reading from John 18. Um, verse 19 through to 27 um, and just a bit of a backdrop of what's happening is Jesus has just been arrested um, and he is being brought on trial before he is crucified and the high priest is questioning Jesus um, so John 18 19 through to 27 meanwhile the high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and his teaching I have spoken openly to the world Jesus replied I always taught in synagogues or at the temple where all the Jews come together. I said nothing in secret. Why question me? Ask those who've heard me. Surely they will know what I said. When Jesus said this, one of the officials nearby slapped him in the face. Is this the way you answer the high priest, he demanded? If I said something wrong, Jesus said, testify as to what is wrong. But if I spoke the truth, why did you strike me? Then Anna sent him bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. Meanwhile, Simon Peter was still standing there warming himself. So they asked him, you aren't one of his disciples too, are you? He denied it, saying, I am not. One of the high priest's servants, a relative of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, challenged him. Didn't I see you with him in the garden? Again, Peter denied it, and at that moment a cough began to crow. What I found really interesting um, about this text is verse 21 where Jesus says why question me ask those who've heard me surely they knew what I said and I just found it really interesting where Jesus is essentially being asked his testimony and he says to ask those who've heard me um, like Jesus is basically communicating that he wants his testimony to be communicated through other people um, and if you look at this passage, if you kind of take a step back, you'll notice, um, I don't know if you have the same subheadings as me, but um, that text is kind of sandwiched in between Peter denying Jesus. And um, John, who wrote this gospel, was really, really clever um, in how he wrote it. And he has loads of these like literacy techniques that are scattered throughout the text and, and how he organizes it. It's really, really interesting. And um, I don't think it's a mistake that this text is wedged in between Peter denying Jesus and um, kind of what Jesus is saying is that he wants his testimony to be communicated through those who have heard him and in that moment the person who knows and has heard him and is closest to him in that moment is Peter who is denying him and honestly like I couldn't think of a better person to tell Jesus' his own testimony than Jesus. Like, it'd be flipping amazing. And then I probably couldn't think of a worse person than in this moment, Peter. Um, like, he's just, it's just basically like, let me tell you about Jesus. I don't know him. I have never heard of him. Like, don't know who he is whatsoever. Do you know? It's just, I, I just find it quite funny. And um, it just kind of got me thinking that in this moment, Jesus is stressing the power of, of our stories and we might use the fanciest of words when we're talking about Jesus and um, or like Peter we might have a bit of a wobble but I just feel like you need to know um, today that God has entrusted you with his story and with his testimony and it's too good um, not to share um, and so I feel like, like we all have people in our lives that we would love to come to know Jesus, right? And um, especially right now, like with everything that's going on, I feel like people are more and more, like they're just searching and they're hungry for something that, like some kind of truth that they can trust. And um, I just felt like God was just 
leading me in to say to you today that you carry that truth and I think like it's so easy to doubt yourselves and I think everyone does it like thinking back to when we gathered together on Sundays and the amount of times I've been like if there's someone that I would love to come and know Jesus I'm like oh like if they would just come on a Sunday morning they'd hear Andy speak like that'd be away it'd be class I'd love it you know like um and the same kind of thing now of like you know sending a link to someone on whatsapp and being like oh if they just click onto the link and they, they tap into sunday morning and, and hear the preach like oh you know they'll be in and it just kind of like please hear me out like I, I do think that that is awesome do you know like um that it's so like church is so accessible for people at the moment but um just when i was reading this passage of jesus isn't saying like you know ask the disciple who is the best at communicating this or to you know or, or ask the the pastor of x y and z you know he instead he says ask those who heard and we've all heard you know and i think like the way the church is scattered right now um i think we've got really really interesting um opportunities but i think we kind of need to wake up a wee bit i need to wake up a wee bit um and I felt like this passage was reminding me that I myself need to be telling Jesus' testimony, not relying on anyone else doing that for me. And I need to be spending time with Jesus and paying, paying close attention to him and, and um, yeah, just spending time with him that I'm able to tell his testimony with my own words and with my own confidence and with my own conviction. And if my testimony of Jesus is Jesus' testimony, then your testimony of Jesus is Jesus' testimony. In the same way that Andy's testimony of Jesus is Jesus' testimony in X, Y, and Z. You get the picture. Um, I think it's worth mentioning as well, Peter, like he went on to be an incredible man of God and saw loads of people come to faith and healings and um, people set free and, and all that was class. But um, just like Peter, Jesus has entrusted you with his story. And I just feel... God's just saying, don't discredit yourself. Um, don't discredit your voice and the story that you have of, of Jesus and that your witness carries truth. And I think now more than ever, like people need to hear that truth. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm gonna pray um, and let's just spend some time um, in Jesus' presence, just worshiping him. and. Um, you're not going to know the words to this first song, um, which is okay. Um, I will just to sit and, and receive it. Um, um, but yeah, so um, I'm going to pray. So if you guys want to close your eyes. So God, thank you that you invite us to be part of your story and you invite us to tell that story. God, just let our souls be awakened and our eyes open to your goodness in our lives that um, you've entrusted us this, this, with this story and it's too good not to share. Um, so God, let our lips bear witness to you and just come and fill us with, with confidence and with wisdom as we immerse ourselves um, in your teachings. And may we be a witness to those around us. God, will you use us, we pray.
guys, thanks for um, tuning in. It was really, really lovely to spend some time with you. Um, I hope this blesses you. And I hope